My name is uh, Gaurav Segal. I am the Section Chief of Pediatric Radiology. And in the next couple of minutes or so, I will be talking about how we do ultrasounds of the brain in the uh, neonatal unit and the ICUs. What we do is we use a high-frequency transducer, which is placed on the head of the child, the neonate. This is mainly done via the anterior fontanelle, which is the largest fontanelle uh, which is present at birth. So we place the probe. Uh, the ultrasound probe on top of the fontanelle and we scan primarily in two planes that is the coronal plane and the sigil plane and I'll show you images of what you're supposed to see while you're doing the, the scan. So the scan is actually most often done by the technologist so however the resident is is encouraged to be present at least for a couple of these scans while they're being done so that uh, the resident gets an idea about what to expect uh, to see and not only that also gets an idea of how to perform the ultrasound just in case uh, one might have to do so particularly in the ER setting where you know you might get called in to uh, take a look at the ultrasound and maybe even perform the ultrasound. Uh, to start off with if you look at the monitor what you would see is uh, images like these. These are uh, scanning which is done in the coronal plane or again once again via the anterior fontanelle and uh, what they say is uh, there are six important uh, places where you need to scan uh, and then there are a lot of other images in between which which are done and can be done as well uh, so this will be like one of the first spots which is very important uh, to scan this is the anterior most aspect of the brain if you uh, if you want to say this is the midline that's the uh, that's the interhemispheric fissure this is the right side so the right frontal lobe that's the left frontal lobe uh, you can also see a part of the uh, globes here. So imagine you're scanning via the, coronal, uh, via the anterior fontanelle and you're angled towards the orbits. So this is exactly what you would see. Now I'm moving uh, backwards. So the next image is where you can see the frontal horns of the lateral ventricle just coming up. That's the frontal horn on the left side. You do not see the right side because it is compressed. Uh, it's compressed. Then in between you can see the uh, normal structure which is known as the septum cavum pellucidum. And again here you can see the temporal lobes of the brain, uh, one on the right and then that's one on the left. Again the midline interhemispheric fox. Moving backwards, uh, then suddenly you start seeing a nice well-defined hypoechoic structure which you can see right in underneath the fox. And this is the corpus callosum, again left, left lateral ventricle, again the right lateral ventricle not visualized because it is compressed. Again, I'm going backwards, so this is another uh, portion of the brain which is which is important to scan and that's actually in the region of the third ventricle. Now, you do not see the third ventricle in this study. The third ventricle will be sitting somewhere here. You do not see it because again, it, it is uh, decompressed, but uh, that's exactly the location, approximately the location of the third ventricle. Temporal lobe on the right, temporal lobe on the left. Now we are uh, posterior frontal lobe on the right, posterior frontal lobe on the left. Moving backwards, uh, kind of the same image, uh, thalami on the right, thalami on the left. And then you take multiple similar uh, sections moving from front going backwards. Now, uh, here you're beginning to see the actually the cerebellum because you're running through, you're, you're, you're passing the beam through the brain uh, into the posterior fossa. So that's the right cerebellum. Uh, there's no real cutoff in the midline which you can see so well, but that would be in the region of the left cerebellum. This structure which divides the temporal lobe on the right the cerebellum would be the tentorium. Same thing on the left, that would be the left tentorium. Moving backwards again, you start seeing an echogenic structure on the right uh, and a similar echogenic well-defined structure on the left. These are the choroid plexuses in the lateral ventricles and that this is exactly where you would see them normally. You will see that there is a paucity of the sulcal markings uh, in the brain parenchyma. It appears very smooth. Uh, all you see is one midline fissure in the center here and uh, you can see one here as well. Uh, these are the sylvian fissures uh, and the paucity of the sulcal markings which you see is uh, because this patient is probably a very premature baby which is frequently in our setting here uh, so this would uh, this is probably like a 24 26 weaker uh, gestational age uh, patient uh, moving on as you go backwards now you start seeing the parts of the parietal lobe uh, which would be in this region here on the right on the left interhemispheric fissure right lateral ventricle, left lateral ventricle, choroid plexus on the right, choroid plexus on the left, moving backwards, uh, kind of similar anatomy. Uh, one backwards again, uh, what you can see here is, this is posterior to the lateral ventricles, so this would be in the region of the occipital lobe on the right, that would be the occipital lobe on the left, and you start seeing this echogenic or bright, uh, or rather white areas, which are seen behind the lateral ventricles which is just a normal appearance of the periventricular white matter. 
posteriorly. And as you keep going further posteriorly, again, you start seeing the occipital lobe on the right, occipital lobe on the left, and then uh, an interhemispheric fissure. Following this, what you will see is then the images change to the sagittal plane. So now we are moving from uh, the right to midline. So we are moving from the right parasagittal plane, we'll go towards the midline, and then from the midline, we'll go towards the left parasagittal plane. So basically, same uh, location, you just turn your probe, and, and so then you can start seeing the sagittal and the parasagittal images. Again, once, to once again, to orient yourself, this is the anterior uh, aspect of the brain, uh, posterior aspect of the brain. This would be the right lateral aspect of the brain, temporal lobe right there, uh, frontal lobes somewhere here, and parietal lobe here. Again, the distinction between the frontal and the parietal lobe is kind of hard to make out on this, uh, on the ultrasound study. Moving more towards the midline now, uh, you'll see it's kind of similar appearance again. You can see in the center there's white matter coming up. Uh, the dark structure is the gray matter and again uh, this is the temporal lobe on the right uh, once again similar image uh, going again towards the midline kind of similar image uh, as the previous ones now as you move further towards the midline you can start seeing that the choroid plexus is now beginning to come up in the lateral ventricle on the right side so that would be the lateral ventricle uh, again the margins are not so well defined because the ventricle is uh, kind of decompressed which is pretty normal uh, for the age group uh, for this age group then you start moving further uh, towards the midline and now you'll start seeing there's a structure here which is known as the caudate nucleus that would be the thalamus uh, thalamus and this uh, this line here which you see is the caudothalamic groove uh, which is uh, pretty normal appearing here uh, broad plexus uh, in the lateral ventricle posteriorly uh, as you come further closer towards the midline, you'll start seeing this well-defined hypoechoic structure in the midline and hypoechoic meaning like a dark structure and that's actually uh, a nicely well-defined uh, corpus callosum which you can see most of this uh, here in the midline. Uh, you'll also start seeing portions of the posterior fossa here, that's the uh, right cerebellum uh, moving towards the vermis uh, and now you can nicely see the vermis. So this is the most echogenic portion of the brain, this structure here, that's the vermis in the posterior fossa. So anterior to the vermis would be the brain stem, which you cannot see as a well-defined structure, but you kind of have an idea where the brain stem would lie. And this hypoechoic or a dark structure, which is seen in between the brain stem and the vermis would be the uh, fourth ventricle. Again, very nicely in the midline, you can see uh, the corpus callosum uh, from anterior that would be the genuine rostrum, body, splenium of the corpus callosum. Uh, so from on, as you move on, you can see that these are parasitical images now from the left to the midline. So same for, uh, same findings as the right to the midline, uh, kind of similar appearance which you see from the left to the midline. Uh, once again, you go through these images as well. These look pretty normal too. So that in a nutshell is, a pro is uh, what you would expect to see in the ultrasound of the brain. What you will also see is uh, we also do cine images of the same thing I just showed you. So this is another image and if you try, if you play a cine loop, you can see they do a, a video of the, uh, of exactly what I showed you. Uh, so you get a better feel of the structures uh, in the brain. This is the posterior coronal portion of the brain on a cine image. Here, this is another image uh, which I'm showing you now is, uh, this is the anterior coronal uh, cine image so starting from front going up to the midline will be the cine image of the uh, in the coronal plane similarly you will also see uh, cine images in the sagittal planes uh, exactly like i showed you the static images will start you will see uh, cine images as well so now this is right to midline uh, in a cine form format and the same thing you would also see from the left to the midline uh, in a cine format so that's uh, in a nutshell uh, ultrasound of the uh, brain or an eco also known as an ecoencephalogram uh, performed in a uh, mature baby thanks